Good day, and welcome to Hiroshima University's English Podcast. Hi, everyone. We hope that you're having fun learning English. I'm Kay. And I'm Joe. Today, we have for you the ghost story, which is perhaps Koizumi Yakumo's most famous one called Yuki Onna. Yes. It's kind of a longer story, so we'll present it over two months, this month and next month. Joe, I have a question. In America and Europe, women are often described as being scare witches, majo, and it's kind of the same in Japan. Why are women described in such a bad way? <laughs> hmm, I don't really know. But maybe it's because people are afraid of their mothers? I'm afraid of my mom. Hmm. Indeed. Good mothers are strong and can be scary. Joe, what are some differences between ghost stories in America and ghost stories in Japan? Well, a lot of things are the same. But one difference is that while ghost stories are often told in Japan in the summer, In the US, ghost stories can be at any time of the year. Yeah, I guess Japanese might think if you get scared in the summer, you shake with sweat and the coldness. So, ghost stories cool you off in the summer. Haha, <laughs> I see. But in the US, ghost stories can be especially scary when told in front of a winter fire with dancing flames and shadows. Ooh! Dancing flames and shadows. In contrast to Japan, America has squeaky staircases, grrr, skeletons in dark closets, boo, and windy towers. I see. Squeaky staircases, skeletons in dark closets, and windy towers. And one other difference is that in America, there are no nice or friendly ghosts. Oh, yeah. I guess there are no chochin obake, which is lantern ghost, or kasa obake, umbrella ghost. Haha, <laughs> right. But mostly, good ghost stories in both Japan and the US are scary. So, you are too afraid to go to bed at night. Right. So, Kay, shall we explain about some of the words in our story today? Let's do it! We begin in a village in Musashi Province. That's the old country just north of Tokyo, basically Saitama Prefecture and part of Kanagawa Prefecture. Right. And Mosaku, who was an old man, and Minokichi, Who was his apprentice were woodcutters. An apprentice is like a student learning special work skills. In Japanese, Nenki Hoko Nin. Right. The apprentice was a lad of 18 years. A lad is a boy. And they were situated, that means located, at a place five miles from their village. They were on the other side of a river bridge, but the river bridge could not resist the current during floods, so it was often carried away. The river bridge could not resist the current during floods, so it was often carried away. One cold winter night, a snowstorm overtook them. Like, osoi kakatta or hui yo tsuita. A snowstorm overtook them, so they took shelter in the ferryman's empty hut. That means they stayed in the ferryman's abaraya, his hut. But only Mosaku and Minokichi were there. Ooh, sounds scary. It was a very small hut, the size of two mats. Nijo. And there was no brazier in the room. No fireplace for cooking. 
so they could only fasten the door, lock the door, and lay down in their straw raincoats. Mino. Their straw raincoats. The wind outside was awful. That means terrible. With the continual slashing of the snow. Slashing is like cutting. The blowing snow was cutting. That's an interesting expression. And the river was roaring. Go o hashita, unatte ita. The nearby river was roaring, and the hut swayed and creaked. Yusuburarete kiki toyo to tateta. The hut swayed and creaked like a junk at sea. A junk is like those ancient small boats near China. Higashinakai no atari no hoga tsuita. えーね、the hut swayed and creaked like a junk at sea, and Minokichi shivered. That means he shook from the cold. He shivered. And then, in the middle of the night, Minokichi woke up and saw a woman all in white bending over Mosaku. She was bending over Mosaku. And blowing her breath upon him. Oh, I guess she was killing him? I guess so too. And then she stooped over Minokichi. Oh no, danger! Oh, that also means bend over. It's the same as stoop over. Yes, she stooped over Minokichi and he could not utter any sound. That means he could not say anything. He could not utter any sound. The woman said to Minokichi that she intended to treat him the same as she had done with the other man. That means she planned to kill Minokichi too? Right. But she said Minokichi was pretty. Today, in modern English, that usually means beautiful for a woman. But in older English, I guess it meant cute. For a boy. Anyways, she said he was so pretty that she could not help feeling some pity for him. <laughs> she couldn't help feeling some pity for him, so she did not kill him. But she said that he must never, never tell anyone about what he had seen that night. After she disappeared, Minokichi sprang up. That means he jumped up. The past of to spring up is sprang up. He sprang up, and the snow was driving furiously into the hut. The snow was blowing very strongly into the hut. So, Minokichi secured the door by fixing several belays of wood against it. A belay is like a short piece of firewood. So he locked the door by leaning several pieces of firewood against it. After securing the door by fixing several belays of wood against it, Minokichi wondered if he had only been dreaming. He wondered if the figure of the woman, that means the shape of the woman, had only really been the gleam of. The snow light. The gleam is like usui hikari, biko, shining. Maybe her figure had just been the gleam of the snow light. Then Minokichi discovered that Mosaku was stark and dead. Oh dear! Stark is an older word, not so important today. It means katai. In modern English, stark is like hard and stiff. At dawn in the morning, Minokichi was lying senseless. That means he was lying down crazy, not able to do anything. Yes, he was lying senseless, but later he came to himself. That means he got better, he came to himself. And 
He said nothing about the vision of the woman. He didn't tell anyone about what he saw. He said nothing about the vision of the woman, and he returned to his calling. One's calling means one's work. For example, her calling is to help the church. That means she works to help her church, Kyokai or God. And Minokichi's calling, of course, was being a woodcutter. So he carried bundles of wood through the forest. Bundles means taba, bundles of wood. And with that, let's listen to part one of Yuki Onna. Yuki Onna, Part One. In a village of Musashi Province, there lived two woodcutters, Mosaku and Minokichi. At the time of which I am speaking, Mosaku was an old man, and Minokichi, his apprentice, was a lad of eighteen years. Every day they went together to a forest situated about five miles from their village. On the way to that forest, there is a wide river to cross, and there is a ferry boat. Several times a bridge was built where the ferry is, but the bridge was each time carried away by a flood. No common bridge can resist the current there when the river rises. Mosaku and Minokichi were on their way home one very cold evening when a great snowstorm overtook them. They reached the ferry, and they found that the boatman had gone away, leaving his boat on the other side of the river. It was no day for swimming, and the woodcutters took shelter in the ferryman's hut, thinking themselves lucky to find any shelter at all. There was no brazier in the hut, nor any place in which to make a fire. It was only a two-mat hut with a single door but no window. Mosaku and Minokichi fastened the door and lay down to rest, with their straw raincoats over them. At first, they did not feel very cold, and they thought that the storm would soon be over. The old man almost immediately fell asleep, but the boy, Minokichi, lay awake a long time, listening to the awful wind and the continual slashing of the snow against the door. The river was roaring, and the hut swayed and creaked like a junk at sea. It was a terrible storm, and the air was every moment becoming colder. And Minokichi shivered under his raincoat. But at last, in spite of the cold, he too fell asleep. He was awakened by the showering of snow in his face. The door of the hut had been forced open. And by the snowlight, Yuki Akari, he saw a woman in the room, a woman all in white. She was bending above Mosaku and blowing her breath upon him, and her breath was bright like white smoke. Almost in the same moment, she turned to Minokichi and stooped over him. He tried to cry out, but found that he could not utter any sound. The white woman bent down over him, lower and lower, until her face almost touched him, and he saw that she was very beautiful, though her eyes made him afraid. For a little time, she continued to look at him. Then she smiled, and she whispered, "I intended to treat you like the other men, but I cannot help feeling some pity for you." Because you are so young, you are a pretty boy, Minokichi, and I will not hurt you now. But if you ever tell anybody, even your own mother, about what you have seen this night, I shall know it, and then I will kill you. Remember what I say. With these words, she turned from him and passed through the doorway. Then he found himself able to move, and he sprang up and looked out. 
but the woman was nowhere to be seen, and the snow was driving fiercely into the hut. Minokichi closed the door and secured it by fixing several billets of wood against it. He wondered if the wind had blown it open. He thought that he might have been only dreaming and might have mistaken the gleam of snow light in the doorway for the figure of a white woman, but he could not be sure. He called Mosaku and was frightened because the old man did not answer. He put out his hand in the dark and touched Mosaku's face and found that it was ice. Musaku was stark and dead. By dawn, the storm was over, and when the ferryman returned to his station, a little after sunrise, he found Minokichi lying senseless beside the frozen body of Musaku. Minokichi was promptly cared for and soon came to himself, but he remained a long time ill from the effects of the cold of that terrible night. He had been greatly frightened also by the old man's death, but he said nothing about the vision of the woman in white. As soon as he got well again, he returned to his calling, going alone every morning to the forest and coming back at nightfall with his bundles of woods, which his mother helped him to sell. Well, Joe, Minokichi survived. Yes, Kei, but life sometimes does not go so easily. In the future, Minokichi will have a big problem. Oh no! Everyone, come back next month for the conclusion to our four part ghost story series. And next time, we will also tell you a bit about some of the tourist places associated with Koizumi Yakumo. Yes, the tourist places. Do you think it might include Shimane Prefecture? I think so. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Bye.